Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and I've finally gotten around to making a video about the design of Battlefield 4. Um, I haven't really been playing it these last couple of months, but I kind of picked it up this weekend just to sort of make the video and uh, record my thoughts, because uh, I haven't really given up on the game, but I'm just not playing it as much anymore. Um, but let's get on with it. So. First things first, uh, there are four different classes in Battlefield 4, and if you haven't played it, it's a military shooter with vehicles, basically. So you have your Assault, Engineer, Support, and Recon. Um, these all have um, one unique weapon, uh, or weapon type, and then there are also certain weapons which every class can use. Um, I can actually open up this in my in my loadout. So if we click the assault here, um, they have assault rifles, carbines, DMR. Um, so the carbines, the DMR, the shotgun uh, are available to all classes. And as you can see, um, I've played a lot, so I've unlocked most of them. But um, for instance, with the DMRs here, you need a certain score with each weapon to unlock the next one. And if we go into a weapon like this one, for instance, um, as you can see here, with kills, uh, you unlock um, the different accessories and barrels and stuff. Um, so if we go into a weapon, which I've used a lot, like this SR, SAR-21, you can see there's a bunch of different sites. There's a bunch of different um, aiming aids or whatever you want to call it, like laser sights and flashlights and things. You have suppressors f to reduce noise. You have a couple of different options to reduce sort of, um, what's it called? Muzzle drift. Um, basically reducing your accuracy when you're um, firing full auto. Um, so the four different classes also have different um, accessories or extra items. Uh, as you can see here, the Assault has Defibrillator and Medic Bag, which heals over time. Uh, the Engineer has either Stinger, um, which is surface-to-air missiles, or you can have uh, Laws and RPGs, which are uh, anti-tank weapons. And then the engineer can also uh, repair. You can also break down enemy vehicles with this repair tool, but it means that you have to get in melee range with them, and it takes several seconds to use, so I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, the sport can throw out ammo boxes, and the recon has a couple of different options. This uh, soflam thingy uh, laser marks targets allowing your allies to shoot them with sort of laser guided missiles and then the C4 X4 explosive which you can throw onto tanks and destroy them with and the recon obviously also has uh, sniper rifles the support has um, machine guns LMGs and the engineer has sort of Uzis uh, as their special weapon so those are the classes um, the problem with most of these weapons is that any given weapon in a certain weapon group um, feels just like all the others. If we go into this uh, engineer primary weapon, for instance, uh, let's take the carbines. So we take the AK-5 and then we compare it to this one. Sure, it has uh, lower accuracy, lower stability, so there's a bunch of different stats, like it has a higher rate of fire, um, but there really aren't that many reasons to switch between weapons. As you can see here, I've used three pretty much. The AK-5, uh, this one I've unlocked 13, and this one 19. Um, but I tend to sort of use the same weapon every time. And since both the engineer and the support uh, tend to use the same weapon, I tend to use the AK-5. Um, it sort of goes stale, I don't know, um, 
just because you tend to use the same weapon every time. Um, because the reason for this, as I said in my really early video on uh, sort of shooter design, is that these weapons are designed to work in every environment from zero to, I don't know, 100 meters or something. After which something like the sniper rifle is obviously better. Um, and in Battlefield, uh, the effective range is probably reduced to, I don't know, 40 or 50 meters. After that, you're kind of too far away. Um, but the sort of assault rifles are still just too good compared to the other ones. Uh, another problem is that when you unlock new weapons, you also lose all the accessories. Like if I go into this, which is my newest uh, sniper rifle, I have iron sights and then I have the rifle scope, uh, which is the only one you start with. Uh, I tend to use most of these medium range ones because I'm not really the sort of um, camping way back sniping, mostly because I'm not good enough at it. Um, but I tend to want to use these sort of mid range uh, options more. The close range ones have no zoom, uh, except for the IR one, so I wouldn't really recommend them. And the sort of 40 times one is kind of weird option, but hey, it's there. Um, then you also have your weapons here at the bottom, and you can change sort of different weapons for them as well. I tend to not use the vehicles much either, because I'm also not good enough with them. Um, the problem with Battlefield, or one of them, is that the vehicles take quite a long time to sort of respawn, and then you also have to drive them to where they're helpful. Um, which means that if your driver is shit, um, you're either going to end up in a bad position, or since the driver tends to be the main weapon handler as well, uh, you just run into the enemy vehicle that's just like yours and then you die. And since several people can be in a vehicle as well, um, you give the enemy multi-kills as well as giving away the vehicles. Um, so yeah, helicopters I'm not going to go into because um, sure I've been flying around small maps with them but in multiplayer you tend to get killed easily and for some reason the uh, mouse sensitivity while flying jets is so way off target you have to sort of lift your mouse and drag it to to do just a simple 180 turn um, so yeah I wouldn't recommend the vehicles um, and let's open the video here uh, unfortunately while recording I recorded the mouse cursor as well uh, which obviously doesn't show when you're playing it um, so unfortunately in the video here you're going to see an extra mouse pointer um, but yeah here I am using my sort of default uh, assault rifle just moving in and shooting some guys and as you can see here uh, the only sort of representation that you're hitting someone is that the sight uh, sort of flares up I'm trying to pause at a proper moment here. Yeah, the four little lines in the middle here, this means that you hit someone. Um, after playing Team Fortress 2, uh, where you have the sort of pinging nose as well as uh, seeing the damage come up, um, going to this is sort of weird, because I tend not to pay much attention to it. And even if you hit, you have a really hard time knowing how much damage you actually did. So the gunplay feels sort of weird um, because you can't tell if you're hitting or if you're doing much damage and unfortunately the um, I don't know if I'm showing it here but if you kill someone and then you get killed um, the guy who kills you you can basically see his health unfortunately that one doesn't work uh, because in some cases he has zero health and in some cases he has a hundred health um, so unfortunately it doesn't work and the sort of feedback when you're hitting something is just too small in my opinion. I'm not sure if you can customize it in any way, but I would really prefer to 
because the sort of pinging noise from Team Fortress 2 has sort of spoiled me in that regard. Um, yeah, let's just move on. As you can see here, I'm pointing at the guy and he gets a sort of red marker over his head. This is uh, called spotting. Um, you basically just mash the Q button while aiming at someone and they show up on the minimap. Unfortunately, it's a bit crowded here, so you can't really see it. Um, when you do this to vehicles and stuff, you actually see them through walls as well, which is really handy. Um, so you basically run around spamming this and eventually eventually it will stop working randomly as well because if you spam it too much you're uh, basically going to be on a built to mark target and you'd get no feedback from this at all so there's another small sort of thing that bothers me uh, but yeah so here's the next clip I'm using a different weapon um, maybe the same site but yeah, again, as you can see, there's a guy marked there. Uh, I have no idea how I killed him. Maybe I threw another grenade. Uh, but yeah, I'm shooting in, and there, if you paid really good attention, you saw that I got the sort of cross, and then I got the cross again, and he died. Um, so the only reliable um, hit indicator is when you kill someone and you see this uh, point show up. Um, because you don't really get, uh, you tend to not get close enough to sort of see them fall uh, because you want to stay in cover, obviously. Uh, yeah, there, um, in this case, I'm playing the assault class. So I ran up and tried to revive him. Unfortunately, someone else already did. Uh, but I threw a medkit on top of him. Um, the medkit just basically lies there. And then you can see here squad healing, I get some points because he's lying on top of the health kit and getting uh, getting healed up. Um, this is really handy. Like in this case, I'm playing on a very small map. Uh, I can just switch over to here. Uh, this is the size of the map I'm currently playing on or in the video. And this is, I think, 16 players on either team. Uh, basically a capture point version of the map. Um, so you have A here, B and C, and then you have the sort of 64 player version um, where you spawn at the bottom. There are two extra capture points, one, no there are four extra ones and one in the middle. Um, so you have the four on the outsides here and then one in the middle instead of just three in the middle. Uh, because as you can see here, this is just the central area of this bigger map, which I will come back to later. Um, but yeah, on the smaller maps and on the indoor map, which is called... Uh, what the hell is it called? Is it this one? Operation Locker, I think. Um, on the smaller maps, Playing um, Assault is actually viable because there tends to be really few um, vehicles, which is what breaks all of the classes except Engineer, pretty much. Um, so on Operation Locker, people tend to sort of heal more and revive more, as well as using support more uh, because you can throw out ammo. Um, unfortunately, on the 64 player maps, um, at least I nearly always play Engineer just because you can fire on tanks and helicopters and jets. Uh, I have that in the video later. But yeah, um, one of the sort of weird problems with the gunplay as well is it, it's really hard to tell if you're doing any damage at all. Like in this case, you can. Uh, obviously see him through the stairs, but you can't shoot through them for some reason. And it's also not uh, reliable, like you can shoot through some like chain link fences with no problems, but some other fences block bullets, um, like this one here. Um, so you tend to run into these sort of weird... Um, uh, a disconnect between being able to see someone and being able to kill them. Um, so that's just one example. I'll see if... Nope, that's what... Not that clip. Um, yeah, and when you die, 
uh, you're also able to respawn either on members of your own squad um, which I can't see here for some reason maybe they're in a full helicopter you can see the green one here which means they're in your squad or you can spawn on um, a point that your team has so as you can see in the bottom here I have 329 to respawn and then if you sort of double click a point you will get uh, auto deploy which basically just means you respawn whenever the timer goes down and since you respawn randomly you can also spawn right behind enemies um, which is sort of one of the drawbacks of the random spawn um, because you will just be killed by people you have no chance of spawning um, the only time uh, this is bad is if you spawn on a member of your own squad uh, you sort of show up before you see anything which means that the enemy can kill you um, can kill you before you can shoot back but that's just one of the consequences of spawning on someone I suppose um, so here I'm driving the tank instead um, as you can see I'm the main driver I don't even have a sort of gunner in this case uh, so I'm controlling both the uh, the cannon as well as the driving and as you can see in the bottom here uh, you can see which way your uh, tank is pointing and you can see which way the gun is pointing and now that I have a driver or a gunner as well you can see which way he is facing as well um, so I will just park it under the spot here I think and since I'm an engineer I can jump out and repair um, unfortunately as you can see here um, I'm trying to repair it and it's shooting sparks and everything which tends to mean that you're hitting with your repair gun unfortunately it doesn't do anything because when you actually repair something you get sort of a circle showing you how much health it has and sort of the health going up and now that I'm in the tank again I have the exact same amount of health that I did when I jumped into it um, so there's just another sort of weird bug um, but yeah here I'm driving around a little and unfortunately I didn't spot that guy running over um, but the tanks is sort of what controls the tempo of the game because they're so hard to take down unless you can get close to them and see for them um, tanks take a lot of shots and they're also um, able to drive away from both most uh, damage sources like if you're running on foot you will never catch a tank um, yeah so the main cannon is sort of a AOE effect which doesn't kill people when you shoot 20 centimeters from them um, but yeah there you have the actual repair which means that this time it's actually doing something and then you can just sort of jump into it again and keep driving um, now I'm obviously not super good with the tank so I uh, tend to be the gunner more and let one of my friends drive instead um, in this case I'm the sort of gunner instead which means I'm mostly just looking around tagging enemies and uh, sort of shooting weak targets because that's what the machine gun does and then when I jump out and repair it he just drives away this is the problem if you're playing with people you don't know um, because uh, maybe it's just me but I've turned off the voice chat in every game where I play on public servers um, and I only use voice with my friends uh, which means that if you repair things which makes you pretty much blind to everything else as you can see here um, you're basically relying on the guy you don't know to protect you from everything um, which also not, tends to not work out a lot and here when I'm sort of starting to fire on things like I tag the guy there there's another guy and the guy just keeps driving and you will see how good C4 is if you're not paying attention so I'm just sort of firing randomly killing people and then surprise there's a guy and he throws C4 and since I had the repair tool I can't even jump out and shoot him 
So that's the fate of the tank, which tends to happen when I'm playing it as well, because um, the sniper guys um, on these maps with sort of high buildings, they can just jump off, paradrop, throw C4 and kill you, um, which tends to work really well. Um, yeah, in this case I'm just showing you that you can uh, sort of switch between positions in a vehicle as well. So in this case I have, um, uh, I don't know what it's called actually, um, but it has a driving position that doesn't have a weapon. And then you have your sort of gunner position, which allows you to shoot. So you can sort of switch uh, between positions within the vehicle as well. This is um, extra helpful when you're driving boats, because from the fourth position you can actually repair the boat which you can't from the other four. So if you're an engineer, you can jump into a boat and repair it. Um, so in this case, I'm just showing you, here's the tank and here's like four of my teammates, five, because there's another guy shooting rockets over here. And it takes quite a beating. So this is why tanks are so good um, and let you sort of dictate the flow of the game. Um, the best thing you can do is actually steal a tank from the enemy, which means that they have to drive it to a position on the map where you can get to it. Because as you can see here, the red lines, um, if you're in the red line area, you get killed after 10 seconds. And the enemy spawn is always in this sort of red thingy. Um, there's also an anti-aircraft gun, which will kill any aircraft going by, because aircraft are the only things that can go through these uh, red lines. Uh, but yeah, taking a tank from the enemy team is probably the best thing you can do, because not only do they, or you get one more, they get one less as well. And they won't get the respawn until that tank is destroyed. Uh, so yeah, the tanks take a lot of damage. Uh, the next example is a helicopter, I think, and here I have the Stinger instead, which, as you can see, this, um, um, the ailes on the outside sort of zoom in, and then you get shoot, which means you've locked onto the target, and then you can just start reloading. So there's one, and there's two, and in this case it was actually a bad pilot, because the um, helicopters and the aircraft have flares, which allows you to basically negate one rocket. Um, and after that rocket is lost, you have to reload and shoot again to do the first damage. And then after that, a good pilot will uh, tend to have hide uh, or be hiding behind a building. Um, so this guy was pretty bad. Um, yeah. Next on to the maps, because um, they've been doing a lot of sort of marketing with the Levolution thing, which I will never mention again after this. Um, it's basically just dynamic map features. Um, so on this map, what happens is you start repairing something, you look around, and then suddenly there will be water everywhere, turning the map into a sort of weird version of itself, where you have to swim everywhere if you're not spawning correctly or in a vehicle. Uh, those cars that I had back there can actually uh, drive through the water. They're sort of amphibious. Um, but yeah, apart from this sort of dynamic feature, uh, I actually have another example in the video. I will move this away and I will see if I can find it. Um, let's try here. Yeah, this one is it. Um, in this case, um, I had this as sort of a weird bug because they have obvious kill triggers. Instead of you being killed by the actual falling building, they just have a kill trigger. Um, inside everything and then things start falling um, but yeah 
This is another sort of dynamic feature where you can blow up the sides of the Gold Coast Hotel. As you can see here, this side is, has fallen and this side has fallen and it falls in such a way that you can sort of run up the sides and run along the top here. Um, you can destroy the sides independently as well, so it's not like um, the skyscraper map, Shanghai something, uh, where you blow up the entire house and you sort of get a new um, capture point main, made out of the rubble. So there's those dynamic features which are pretty cool but they're sort of gimmicky. Um, and then you have the sort of uh, default destruction or the uh, basically blowing houses up just by shooting them with tanks. So as you can see here this used to be a three-story building and now it's just rubble. You can crawl under it and jump around on top of it but this is all pretty buggy unfortunately so I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, mainly because the sort of jump feature isn't actually a real jump. It's just some sort of weird animation um, which means that you easily get stuck on any sort of debris regardless of how high it is. And my favorite map for this destruction is actually this one. Uh, I can't remember names, sorry. It's the one with the train. Uh, but yeah, there are actually two capture points here, A and B, uh, along sort of the main highway. And then there are houses on both sides. And I love these capture points. It's just so much fun running around in the destroyed houses or just running from a tank and him shooting uh, shooting the walls and sort of breaking everything down. Uh, one of my favorite kills was actually uh, one that an opponent did to me. Um, he uh, or I ran into a house and he must have had me tagged or something because he just put C4 on the wall and blew the wall apart to kill me, which I kind of enjoyed because that's just the fun part of uh, destructible environments, which you tend to not get a lot of the time. Um, so I actually prefer this sort of more natural destruction of houses compared to the more uh, scripted version that's in the um, in the events like this one. Um, let's see what we what we were doing. Uh, oh yeah, the rewards. Um, every time you finish a level you will get different rewards based on how you were doing. Um, and this is sort of the strength of the uh, multiple weapon system because you will always get some sort of reward regardless of how well you were actually doing. Like even if you died five five times per kill or something like that, and I've had those rounds, trust me, you will still get these sort of ribbons. Um, you will get round boost. This was uh, double XP weekend or something like that. Um, so as you see, 12-12, which is not an impressive kill-death ratio. Uh, but you still get all of these sort of bonus points. Um, and as you can see here, it's just kill enemies with, kill six enemies with any assault rifle. Uh, spotting, which just means you ran around spamming Q. And then you get ribbons for winning. Unfortunately, I don't win a lot, because for some reason uh, my team hates me. Uh, if you check on my uh, overview here, you can see 43%, which is sort of lower, because I've played for 76 hours and I'm not that bad. Um, but yeah, random tangent. Um, so the game is really good at giving you rewards, and if there weren't so many weapons, I suppose they couldn't have given you all of this stuff. Uh, so even if you lose, you get this screen with a lot of rewards, which is basically just giving you the sort of uh, positive feedback stuff, um, allowing you to play the game longer, um, or keeping you in the game, because not only do you see progress um, all the time, you also get um, just happy feeling inside something, I don't know. 
Um, so here's one part I don't enjoy, which is being shot at from high houses. Uh, because for some reason, uh, being on top of the world causes no um, penalty. Um, so this must be sort of an intended part of the game, which boggles my mind. Uh, what tends to happen is the team with uh, the best helicopter pilot will basically, basically take over the entire top of the world. And while this means that you can't control points, uh, it also means that you will get shot from the um, entire map from people you never saw. Um, Shanghai is the worst because from the central point there you can basically uh, para drop to any other point of the game which means that the guy or the team that has the central house will also have such a amazing advantage across the rest of the board. Um, it wouldn't bother me if there were like the red fog like um, if you stay up here for more than 10 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever you will die. Uh, it's just that people place sort of respawn nodes on top of these and then they sit up there the entire game which makes me sad. Um, yeah, here's just me showing off uh, that it's not a real jump. This ledge is something like 10 or 50 centimeters high and you can't really see it, but I'm actually pressing the jump button here. Oh, yeah, now you can see it. So I'm trying to get over the edge, and yeah, there you go. So it took just four tries to get over a 10 centimeter ledge, which, when you're being chased by a tank, is quite a lot of time. Um, it works a lot better with stuff like these chest high walls, um, because I suppose. Um, they're more heavily scripted or something. Um, while some things like, you know, debris and those kind of ledges where you're not really supposed to play are super buggy. Um, uh, let's see here. I'm just going to go look for a picture. Uh, no, I didn't have that picture. But um, while talking about this bug here with the ledges, I'm also going to talk about the incredible instability of the game. Um, even though it's been patched like a lot at this point, um, while we're playing, uh, it's me and three of my friends, um, it's very rare that 30 minutes goes by and not one of us crashes. Um, sure, on release it was much worse, um, where uh, I don't think we had a map like the first 10 maps we played where everyone actually made it through a map and unfortunately if you don't reach the score screen at the end your score will not be recorded and you will not receive any sort of uh, points or you will not unlock any sort of weapons because I suppose the service only talks to the uh, the sort of main score servers at the end of each map because otherwise it would put too heavy a load on the uh, on this server bandwidth or whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, it really blows my mind that the game can be so unstable. And I haven't had anything this bad since the launch of Diablo 3, I suppose, uh, which was just server side and not client crashing every 20 minutes. Um, so that was just a random tangent with bad thingies. Um, well, on the subject of maps, uh, whoops. Uh, while flying, as I said, you can get outside of the sort of uh, red marked area. I'm not sure if we are here, but regardless. Uh, and as you can see, the terrain outside the playable area is sort of basic. It's a height map with some noisy uh, textures and a couple of trees. Um, you're obviously not supposed to see this, because if you ever land on this terrain, uh, you're going to die pretty quickly. Um, so it's more of a, you know, a nice silhouette and some trees and some depth fog. Um, uh, if we talk about the map layout again, 
because of how the game is designed, um, it tends to be sort of points where where you're intended to go and fight, and then in between them it's sort of boring terrain where vehicles are supposed to be. So if you ever get stuck on a point um, without any sort of transport, you're going to have to run to the next uh, point to actually play the game, I suppose. Uh, which is a bit unfortunate. As you can see here in the top right here, there's a, a small vehicle spawning. So you can spawn into the vehicle um, and then just drive along the road to the middle point, which is obviously a nice touch. And since you're supposed to spawn on your squad anyway, um, your squad is supposed to try to keep alive. Uh, I'll see if I can bring up as you can see in the bottom here, you actually have a unlock bar, which is basically how well your squad is doing. And you get different sort of bonuses depending on um, what you've chosen. If you go to the uh, soldier loadout at the bottom here, you can see uh, defensive. So level one armor, reduce damage, cover, so you can basically pick one of several uh, several of these perks and then when your squad is doing well basically not dying a lot um, you will unlock the uh, the steps here which is sort of a nice touch um, if all of your members are dead at one point you will lose a certain amount of this I'm not sure how much so don't ask me that um, but yeah random tangent again. Um, the last thing that I'm going to talk about is actually the commander mode, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, what happens here is you basically join a server as a commander. Unfortunately you can't jump between soldier and commander on a server. You have to quit the game and uh, restart it. And basically what you can do is um, throw up scans which shows enemies uh, or infantry and vehicles, you can spawn this uh, plane which allows the player to jump into it and fire on the ground. And you can also give uh, orders to different squads, basically telling them where you want to go. So it's it's just sort of a small minigame where you're able to not directly control people, uh, because regardless of what orders you give, you they can just ignore them and do whatever they want, which tends to happen most of the time. Uh, but yeah, I think this is pretty cool. It's like the sort of coach aspect of Dota 2, where uh, better players are able to take the commanding role and uh, sort of teach newer players how to play the game, which pleases me, <laughs> because I think this is pretty cool. Uh, so instead of just running around aimlessly and wondering what you're going to do, a commander can jump onto your server and give you orders. I think this can be played on things like the iPad as well, uh, but don't quote me on that. Um, so people can lie on the couch and sort of help people out. Um, I think this is pretty cool. Overall, uh, my thoughts on Battlefield are not super positive just because I think it gets a bit samey um, just because the weapons are so uh, similar to another and because the uh, sort of public version of the game where you don't connect or you don't give um, you don't really talk to the players in your squad is kinda weak to be honest uh, it's just too confusing and what tends to happen is that you you run in, you kill a guy, and then all his friends shoot you over and over again. Um, but if you're playing with friends, I would definitely recommend it. Um, it's just a nice sort of team uh, team experience uh, because, just like I said, uh, if someone shoots you, you can see him when you're dead, and you can just point him out to your friends. Uh, so it goes both ways, I suppose. This has been the design of Battlefield and it's a really long video, so I hope you've seen all the way to the end. If so, thanks for watching, and since I've, 
I'm going to have a couple of weeks of vacation right now. If you have any ideas for new videos, just post a comment down below and I will try to get something done at least once per week now that I am have some time off. Thanks for watching.